Hello everyone, I'm Kuma. Alliance is a very important aspect of Dota Underlords. Every alliance has different bonus. Is it possible to put them together and compare them on the same scale? This is what we are going to do today. Comparing the bonuses from major alliances. Before we start, let's look at an example. Here we have two identical units, each with 10 HP with 1 DPS. If they are fighting each other, they are going to kill each other at the same time. Next, we increase 1's HP by 100% to 20 HP and 1 DPS. And increase the other one's DPS by 100% to 10 HP and 2 DPS. They are still going to kill each other at the same time. By using this as our foundation, we assume that increasing HP by X% percent is as effective as increasing DPS by X%. Percent. Also, HP and DPS combined have a multiplicative effect on unit's power. Please be reminded that when there are multiple units, this works differently. But this is the best foundation we can use. And there are some more assumptions we have taken. For the relationship between base attack and actual DPS, because the increase in base attack would increase mana regen and therefore making spells cast faster and more frequently. So we simply assume that increasing base attack is 100% effective as increasing in overall damage. For armor, 5 armor is the most common value for units in Dota Underlords. So we assume all units are having 5 armor by default when calculating the effect of increase or reduction in armor. And according to damage formula, 5 armor is giving 22.81% damage reduction in physical damage. Similarly, we assume magic resist is 0 by default for all units. There are a few things we are not accounting for in this comparison. First, we ignore individual hero's power. We are only comparing the bonuses from alliances. So this video should not be treated as a simple tier list for alliance. Also, we are not taking into account stuns, items, regen and lifesteal. These factors changes a lot depending on the actual team compositions. We would be comparing these 13 alliances which fall under the requirements. Also, please be warned that there are scaling factors which are subjective. I will talk about the reasons behind the scaling factors I have chosen when I talk about each alliances. You can adjust yourself if you feel different. Ok, let's get started. First, we have Assassin. Assassins gain chances to critical hit. We can calculate the expected value of attack damage increase by averaging the critical hits and normal hits. The expected damage increase is 20%, 60%, and 120% for 3, 6, and 9 units respectively. As I've mentioned before, we assume that increase in base attack damage is 100% effective. So the scaled effectiveness is the same as expected damage increase. Orly gains a fat increase in HP as bonus. Because this is a fat bonus, the higher level the units are, the less percentage increase it is. Level 2 is taken as a reference for scaled effectiveness, as this would be the level we are usually dealing with. Just remember that if your body units are level 1, percentage wise, they are getting more bonus. Do it. Lower star jewels are upgrade a level. This one is a little bit complex. First, we have to understand how much stronger a unit is when it is upgrade a level. When a unit is upgrade, it gets increased HP, attack damage, as well as spell power. By checking the stats of all four jewels, we can see that no matter it is from level 1 to 2 or from level 2 to 3, we get very close to 100% increase in HP and attack damage. For spell power, it's different for each druid. I would say it's approximately 60% increase on average. To make the calculation easier, 
we simply assume that spell power contributes about half of the overall power for druids. And remember that we always assume that increasing attack damage is also boosting the effectiveness of spells. That's why we have the equation here for power increased. Knowing the amount of power increase of upgrade units, we can now calculate the FH power increase for the whole alliance. This bonus is most powerful if all jewels are of the same level. If the jewels are of different levels, the bonus itself is actually less effective. The numbers in the backers are the approximate effectiveness when half of the jewels are of one level lower than the other half. One trivia for Druid. Extra Druid get zero bonus, while extra units in other alliances still get the bonus even though it does not further improve it. The next is Elusive. Elusive gains evasion as bonus. Before we go on, we need to understand effective HP. This is a concept we use when we talk about damage reduction or damage avoidance. Let's look at an example. If a unit has 10 HP and taking 2 damage per second, it can survive for 5 seconds. Now, if it has 50% damage reduction, the damage received drops to 1 damage per second, so it can now survive for 10 seconds. Technically, it is the same as having HP increase by 100% to 20 HP. Sometimes, damage reduction can be even more effective than HP increase. It is when we have healing and shields. Back to elusive. Now we understand effective HP, we simply transform evasion to effective HP with the formula here. By converting to effective HP, you can see the true power of damage avoidance. If you look at the evasion rate, it may seem each tier is giving a similar bonus, but actually it does not. The more you stack evasion, the more effective it is. You can see that I'm not using 100% for scaling factor here. It is because evasion cannot reduce or avoid magic damage directly. Evasion can reduce enemies' mana gain from attacks, but it does not stop enemies from gaining mana by taking damage. But keep in mind, there is one very strong advantage of evasion compared to other forms of damage reduction. It does avoid true damage when you avoid the attack itself. Hardness. Hardness reduces enemy's armor. We calculate the damage increase using the extra damage dealt and the original damage. If you don't remember, 22.81% is the damage reduction for a unit having 5 armor. Because this increase base attack, so we take scaling factor as 100%. Hunter. Hunter gains chances to attack twice. This is a very straightforward bonus. If my understanding is correct, it means that it has chance to attack twice instead of once per attack. So the damage increase is the same as the chance of attack twice. And we take our 100% scaling factor as usual for increase in attack. Knight gains damage reduction for both physical and magic damage. First of all, I want to say this is really a very strong bonus. Depending on whether they are next to another light ally, they get different amounts of damage reduction. We use 100% as the scaling factor here, because it reduces both physical and magical damage. The only weakness is true damage, but true damage is not that common. You could adjust accordingly if you feel different. Next, we have Mage, reducing enemy's magic resistance. The increase in magical damage is the same as the amount of magic resistance reduced, when we take the assumption that enemies have zero resistance by default. 
I use 70% as the scaling factor here. Because no matter how heavy magic focused your team is, it is likely that your team has some physical damage source, either from the tanks or from attacks which charging mana for the spells. Savage. Savage has a very straightforward bonus, increase in attack damage. Just remember that it affects the whole team. Next one is Scaled. Scaled reduces magical damage by increasing whole team's magic resistance. The conversion to effective HP is just the same as before, but I'm only giving it a 30% scaling factor here, because magical damage is less common. Also, when comparing to physical damage reduction, damage reduction of magical damage does not come with additional bonus like reducing mana gain. You may think that scaled worth more, because it is effective against mage team. But the truth is, scaled could be kind of less effective when enemy has mage bonus. Don't get me wrong, you may still want to have scaled bonus when playing against a strong mage team. Take a look at this example. Normally, scale 2 gives your effective HP an increase of 42.9%. But if you are against a mage free team, you are only getting an increase of 27.3%. Of course, you should give it a higher scaling factor when versus mage team due to more magic damage received. But how much more? No one can say for sure. I would have to leave this question to you. Here we have Scrappy. Scrappy bonus provides additional armor and HP regeneration, and you get double bonus if you have fewer units than your opponent. Please be reminded that we are not taking into account the effect of health regen when calculating the effectiveness. But you should remember that damage reduction works well with HP regeneration. I'm not giving a score for Scrappy Fee. Depending on the ally who get the bonus, the effect can vary a lot. I'm taking 85% as the scaling factor to the armor reduction effect. Same as Eration. Just remember that Eration can avoid true damage, but armor does not. So make sure you are aware of this when you are fighting against some strong demon team. Troll. Troll units gain increased attack speed. And with Troll 4, other allies gain increased attack speed as well. Attack speed increase translate to the same amount of expected damage increase. And as usual, we are using 100% as scaling factor here. The last one is Warrior. Warriors gain increased armor as bonus. Because we are not taking into account health regen, the calculation here is just the same as Scrappy. But this is alliance only. If you are still here, that's great, here is our summary. Please remember that scaling factor is subjective. Just take that as a pinch of salt and use your own scaling factor instead. And here are some of my takeaways from making this comparison. First, light is really strong. For Druid, Druid is good, but don't get too excited. The condition for getting the optimal result for Druid is strict. I would go for two duels more often for early game and keep them in late game only if I'm building savage or elusive. Elusive is insane if you have lie of them, but you may need to use some other alliances to carry them before you reach the end game. And remember to scout if others are building for mage. For example, Crystal Maiden could be your nightmare. Hardness is always good to have. You may want at least two of them if your team allows. But one reminder. You need the special item which converts human to hardness in order to reach sex hardness. For hunters, forget about hunter sex. It is just a joke. For scrappy, remember that this number does not reflect the total power because health regen is not taken into account. Lastly, Warrior 3 is really good. That's all for this video. I hope this is useful to you.
If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up, share the video to your friends, subscribe to the channel for similar videos, and follow me on Teach and Cheater. The link are in the descriptions down below. See you guys next time. Oh.